All right, so in a previous video, we took a look at the new features in the video player of Studio One version 6.1. And in that video, I mentioned that I would talk about this thing over here, which is something that I just call a slug, but it because it's a leader, it's something that you can put in place. And the purpose of this is a couple things. First of all, it is a very specific duration in length in terms of with respect to frame rate. And also we have some tone that we have at the beginning. So let's pop over to a new song over here and let's dive in. So first of all, I have a number of tracks over here. Now there's quite a few different ways that you could do this. You could create a dummy event and then you could use the tone generator on the event and then you could render the event effects or you could do the same thing and you could actually use transform to rendered audio. The way that I'm gonna do this and just as kind of just to really drill this down is I have a stereo track over here with tone generator plugin on it. And then I have another track that's called tone print. And then we have two tracks, which I've pre-labeled and we're going to kind of go through how you would go about creating a two pop. Okay. So first things first, I have a tone generator plugin on this track. Now it has a very specific setting. So one K is the tone, the frequency of the tone that we're going to use. And then in terms of level, I'm in North America, so I'm going to go with minus 20. If memory serves, I think the EU uses minus 18. I could be wrong. It's been a long time since I did anything uh, in terms of an EU production, but something's telling me that they might use minus 18 for the two pops, but I'm not 100% sure. So basically, we're not worried about any sweep or anything like that. We're just basically using a sine wave 1K frequency at minus 20, and if I activate this we get a very annoying tone. Now, in terms of the second track over here, I have a track we're gonna call this Tone Print. So, and you don't have to do that this way, I'm just gonna to choose to do it this way. So I'm going to actually set the input of this track to the Tone Generator track. Now we're gonna record enable this, we will also mute it, and then basically all I need to do is let's go back to this, we're gonna activate the Tone Generator, and I'm just going to record some tone, maybe four seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, something along those lines. We'll activate record. Okay, so we have our tone that has been recorded. You can see over here, it's called tone print. Now, in terms of how we create this, it's actually very easy. So first of all, I wanna talk about a couple things. If we open up this finder window over here. Notice that I have these two files. These were created November 5th, 2014. I had a composer that I worked with a lot and he was mentioning to me, it's such a pain to generate or create tone with accurate frame boundaries and logic. And so at the time, this is before I switched over the studio one full time, I was still working in Pro Tools. I said, no problem. I'm going to create you a couple different slugs that you have that you can just throw them in because I was mixing a lot of his work. You can just throw them into your productions and then you'll have everything ahead of time. So if I drag these two files in to Studio One and I'm going to do a data zoom. I have this mapped out to a key command, but if you don't, you can click, hold and drag this little slider over here and this allows you to just increase the vertical waveform height, but you're not increasing the level, just the height. Let's zoom in here because I want to kind of highlight a couple key differences. Take a look at this tone. This is 23.98, otherwise known as 23.976. You might see either one of those. They're pretty much interchangeable. Uh, different programs might call them a different thing, but 23.98, just kind of like the shortened version of 23.976. And we have 25. So why do we have, let me just deactivate this for a moment. Why do we have different durations in terms of the frame length? Okay. I've got snapping on, I'm going to change my main time base from bars to frames. Now, if I take a look at this, we're working at 23.98. So let's change this to 23.976. We'll click apply and okay. Now, if we do that, notice that if I zoom in pretty much frame accurate that the individual frames or the duration of the amount of tone that we have is exactly one frame duration at 23.976 frames. Now let's zoom in a little bit again, right to about there. And now let's change this over to 25 frames per second. We'll click apply and okay. Now take a look at this. If we take a look at this frame boundary and we zoom in, we have a sample accurate frame boundary of a new duration of tone. 
And basically what you need to understand is that if we take the same analogy that we used in the last video, where let's say for a second that we're working in 25 frames. If I have a notebook and it has 25 pages and I have 25 images that are drawn on each of those pages and they're each slightly different and I flip through that notebook in exactly one second, that is what we end up with. So if I'm dividing that amount by 25 versus 24, then it makes sense that the increments would be slightly, slightly different. And also we could even, let's, let's drag in a 30 frames per second one here, or this is 29.97, let's drag this one in. If we take a look at this now, notice that we have an even larger number in terms of the frame. So the duration of the actual frame, and if I change this to 29.97, where are we? Right over here. Now we have a different duration. So this is the first thing that you need to understand is that frames have different durations. The other thing that you need to understand, which is kind of a little bit wonky or a little bit awkward to understand, is that because frames are slightly different, then two seconds of frame rate, of a specific frame rate, might not exactly equal two seconds of wall clock. What is wall clock? Wall clock is hours, minutes, seconds. And it's absolute 24 hours in the day equals 24 hours of wall clock. But 24 hours of a specific um, time code in terms of a very specific frame rate might actually not equal 24 hours of wall clock. So this is the one confusing thing. But the main thing that I want to get at over here is that we understand that the frames are actually different lengths. Okay, so now let's get rid of these and let's talk about how to make them. Okay, so first of all, let's start off with our 23.98, or I should call it 23.976. And I'm going to set this to 23.976. We'll click apply and okay. And actually, I will change this as well. Instead of 20, 0.98, we might as well say 0.976. And now, how do we go about making this? Well, it's actually really, really easy. What I'm going to do is with my snapping enabled, and I have this option over here that link arrow and range tools. Now that I have snapping enabled, notice that if I highlight selections, it snaps to these frame boundaries. So it's very easy for us to grab a very specific amount. In this case, I'm going to highlight one frame of the tone print, hold down alter option, click, hold and drag. And now I have just added exactly one frame of duration of 1K tone at minus 20 in terms of level. Now, that's the first step is making sure that you have the, the, the one frame at the frame rate that you need it to be. And let's just double check again, make sure 23.976. Okay, we're good. The next thing that I want to do is because we changed our main counter to frames, our main counter now represents frames. So we have hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go two seconds. Now let's zoom out a little bit and see where my cursor is over here. It is exactly at the two mark. So, and again, we're snapping to frame boundaries. So now what I can do is I'm actually just going to highlight across everything. We'll click, hold and drag this, this boundary till we get the drag handles. I'm gonna highlight across everything. Keep in mind, I've actually named my track. So now when I use Command B, we are getting a newly rendered file that is with, that has one frame of the specific frame rate that we're working at, 23.976, and its exact duration in this frame rate is two seconds. So there's our two pop for 23.976. Now in terms of exporting this, there's a couple different ways that we can do this. Technically, if nothing else was present in the session, so for example, we could mute this, then all we really need to do is we could use shift P, which will snap the in point and out point to the exact boundaries of an audio event. And I could use export mix down if I wanted to. Another thing that we could do is we could use export stems and I could choose none. And then I could just choose this one over here, however you want to do it. And last but not least, if we open up the files tab, we could have a folder that we've created. We could simply click, hold and drag, drag it across to here. And this would render this exact file, which is exactly as we need it, the exact duration that we need it. This would render that as well. So that's one. Now let's go ahead and let's create the 25 frames per second version. Okay, so I'm going to just move this up. We will re-enable this and let's mute this for now. The first thing that we need to do, of course, is we need to change our frame rate to 25, which is PAL. We'll click apply and OK. And now the same thing again. We'll just zoom in a little bit. We know that we have accurate frame boundaries because our snapping is on and where our time base is set to frames. 
I'm going to highlight exactly one frame at 25 frames per second. Alter option, click, hold, and drag down. And now we have a one frame duration, which is a tiny bit shorter than the 23.98, because keep in mind, we are dividing the one second in 25 increments versus 20, roughly 24. So it's gonna be a tiny bit smaller over that one second. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll, I'll go return to zero, and then I'll, I'll place my cursor or I place my mouse in the seconds, hours, minutes, seconds, and I'm gonna to go to exactly the two mark. And then now, if I zoom in here, notice that the two mark of the frame rate, it's slightly different between the 25 frames per second and the 23.976, right? This is something that I mentioned. Actually, 25 is very close to wall clock. It's more accurately close to an actual two seconds. But regardless, this is just something that I wanted to point out. If you get down to like the sample level of things, it's not necessarily exactly two seconds. And this confuses a lot of people. But once you understand that the, the frame rate and the length of the frames, and then you go by the SMPTE seconds, not necessarily the minutes and seconds, but by the SMPTE, then you're good there. So what am I going to do over here? Okay, well, let's make sure that we highlight exactly to the edge of this boundary. And then it's the same thing here. I can pull this back. We'll zoom out a little bit more. Again, I'm gonna pull this back till it's going across everything. And then now that I have those, the exact duration highlighted with the range selection tool, again, Command B. Now, because we named our tracks, we have an accurate name for the two pops, 25 frames per second, two pop, 23.976, and so on and so forth. So this is basically what you do. And if you wanted to repeat it again for 30 frames, it would be super easy. You would just change this from 25 uh, over to true 30 and then click apply and OK. You would copy an exact frame duration, one frame at 30 frames per second, drag it down. Then you'd go to your actual frames counter to move to the two second mark so you know your cursor's placed properly. And then basically highlight from that point backwards all the way to the front. Now, one other thing I want to mention, and then I think we'll probably call it wrap here on this video, is with respect to two pops, you won't necessarily always be using a two pop. Uh, certain formats, so for example, I spent a lot of time in short format advertising music, that was always two popped. Anything that came in was two popped on, on the way in and two popped on the way out. They were two popped from the editor and usually the videos that you got, the work prints that they call them, might be a lower resolution version of the actual video. That usually had a time code burn in on it. And that's how you know you set up your session properly. This is something I went over in um, the 6.1 version, the 6.1 video uh, update that I did just recently. I'll make sure I put a link to that. But the other thing I wanted to make note of is that I've done stuff before that was EU where it didn't have a two pop, but it had like a 10 seconds and it was in, in, in PAL. And if memory serves correct, I believe that the actual first frame of action started at the 10 hour mark. And that my leaders and tone, it wasn't a two pop like I was used to seeing, but it was actually, I think it started at 000950 and then it had 10 seconds of leaders and tone. And then my actual first frame of action was after that. So you might find yourself in a situation where depending on where you're working, that you might need to generate different amounts of tone or different types of leaders depending on what you're doing. And if that's the case, it's fairly simple as long as you know what you wanted to do. For example, I don't know if we have enough tone to do 10 seconds, but if I needed to do 10 seconds, oh, we do. Um, let's say you just needed 10 seconds of tone or something like that. You would make sure that you're in the proper frame rate over here, which would be like, for example, PAL. And then I would just create a new track and I would copy over exactly the amount that I need. So if I go to my locate selection, this is starting at zero. And here, this is at the 10 second mark for the first frame of action. So that could be dragged if I needed that. It's basically anything you need to do. As long as you get the frame rate accurate, this is honestly something that, um, how do I say this in a nice way? Um, this is one way that you can tell if somebody is kind of starting off and new to everything, or if they're seasoned and they understand proper workflow in terms of audio post-production, composing, things like that, is that they're not um, intimidated or they're not scratching their head when somebody says, send your stuff back over to popped for the, for the stereo mix and the stems. 
this is another thing to take into consideration. Um, we're talking right now about just generating a two pop, but when you finish your production and you basically sending uh, a new video file that has your music, because maybe it was a temp track before, when you send it back, you want to make sure that what you're sending back is two popped too. And this is a great reason. This is why I have a two pop in everything, because whether I'm composing something or mixing it, the stereo mix and the stems, everything's two popped and it's two popped at the right level. And nothing screams amateur more than getting a production back. And the two pop is like hitting zero dB, which is way too loud. It's limited. The two pop is always going to be at a very specific level, even if you're sending a smashed mix uh, a two mix it has a limiter on it or something like that and then your you know dynamic version and then your stems your two pop levels always have to be accurate your two pop has to be the proper frame duration for the video frame rate that's embedded into the video file it's just a good habit to get into so that is how to create two pop slugs you can do them all in one shot export them to a folder and then use do create whatever you need in terms of what you work with the most and then you have basically a folder on file to be able to use those for any future project anyways that's all the time i have available for today hope that you enjoyed this and we'll catch you in the next one cheers <laughs>